Peloton stock has lost more than three quarters of its value since the highs of last January. And new CEO has announced layoffs as he gears up for a turnaround. But is Peloton salvageable? That is the question of the morning. And John Ford is here to weigh in. What do you think, John? Hey, Andrew, of course it's salvageable. Peloton made a big mistake and misjudged demand, but it's still the most exciting premium fitness brand in a generation. It's got both premium hardware products that people are willing to pay more than $1,000 each for and a premium fitness service with instructors who have become celebrities. Yes. Peloton's also got cost problems, and new CEO Barry McCarthy took a tough step toward fixing them with layoffs and outsourcing more warehousing and delivery. But don't make the same mistake so many investors made in January with growth stocks throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Just because Peloton has major problems doesn't mean it's a lost cause. Fortunately, the company's not resting on its laurels. It's got new product coming out for strength training, Peloton Guide, and a new heart rate band along with it. There are some no-brainer things Peloton probably should do. They should make it explicitly easy to upgrade your bike every two years by trading it in. Instead of positioning the bike and tread as an alternative to gym membership, they should partner with local gyms that have Peloton equipment so that Peloton members get special access. But this is a setback, not an implosion. A setback. OK, but the latest quarterly results, as you know, showed some real problems with the demand picture, right? Well, Andrew, uh, on the other hand, maybe it's not salvageable. I mean, fitness products and services run hot and cold, right? Everybody's in the gym in January, but after Valentine's Day, it thins out. Exercise bikes turn to clothes hangers. That's what's happening to Peloton. It seemed like the perfect solution when everybody was stuck at home, but Peloton acted like pandemic level demand would continue forever. And it's not. At the height of the pandemic in 2020, the fall, they dropped the price of the bike from 2250 to 1900 when they already couldn't ship enough. Then things really got ugly. In the latest quarter, Peloton doubled spending on sales and marketing and on R&D. That just as bike sales started falling. So here's why it's really not salvageable. Peloton's become a classic hardware logistics nightmare. It's paying too much for components. It has too many contract manufacturers. And its warehousing and shipping process is too inefficient. Meanwhile, sales are slowing, and it's been dropping prices to try to goose them. To fix all that, it should take the painful step of canceling new product launches to focus on retooling the core bike product for more efficient manufacturing and delivery, higher margins. Instead, it's launching new products to boost members and revenue. Won't work, Andrew. Okay, so at the same time, we should also mention, as you said at the top, they're laying off 2,800 employees. And the question is, is that enough? Well, Andrew, here's the tough thing. Uh, I remember 20 years ago, there were so many of these like uh, device companies, Palm, Apple, et cetera, who were trying to launch product, and they kept running into this similar hardware logistics nightmare where you get, if you get the costs wrong at the beginning, then it causes so many problems for so many quarters you're playing catch-up. We'll have to see if that's the situation Peloton is in. If it is, this might be even tougher than it looks.